Hi, my name is Alex and I'm the Chief of Product at Unicraft. And in this video, I'll be diving into a quick start tutorial of how to supercharge your next application using ultra lightweight virtual machine images. Let's dive in. You're probably wondering, what's an ultra lightweight virtual machine image and why do I need one? Well, it's easier to answer the second question and that's performance and security. Specialized virtual machine images and ultimately the OS and kernel image are designed to do one thing and one thing only, and that's run your application. This means that the VM is tuned to your application and how it runs, whether it's a web server, game server, or anything else that you could put in the cloud. By tuning the whole stack, you cut out all the things that would otherwise slow down your application, giving your application a free performance boost. Similarly, by cutting out sidecar applications like SSH, unused libraries, or even dead code in your application, the attack surface is significantly reduced, and so is the software bill of materials. You're probably also thinking, why do I care about VMs? My app runs as a container or as a WebAssembly module. It's lightweight and secure already. Well, unfortunately, this is a common misconception. One bad container or WebAssembly module can compromise the whole host, and the host is typically backed by a virtual machine. Go to any infrastructure provider, GCP, AWS, your node pools are backed by VMs because they're secure. So what's the answer? Stripping down Ubuntu, stripping down Linux. If I just delete system D and replace it with my own init program on Linux, will I get the same container semantics, but as a VM? Hard chance. Linux is designed as a multi-user monolithic kernel. And even customizing this is A, not fun because lots of options and long compile time, and B, it still boots in the realm of hundreds of milliseconds to seconds, consumes more memory. This is where Unicraft comes in. Container-like semantics with the ability to customize the kernel each time, giving you those free performance boosts and security peace of mind. Unicraft is an open source unikernel development kit. It lets you build, package, and run your application as an ultra lightweight virtual machine. And I'll show you how lightweight in a moment, but first we're gonna need a terminal. The first thing that we're gonna wanna do is open up our browser and go to unicraft.org. Here we're gonna find a one-liner install that we can use to get started with our command line client called Craft. In a terminal window, you can then just paste this to get started. For the first question that it asks us is whether we would like to install Craft using a package manager. I'm going to say yes. Would you like to install recommended dependencies? Yes as well. It then asks me whether I want to be root. <laughs> yes. And this is going to go ahead and install a whole bunch of additional tools. Craft is our command line companion tool for managing Unicraft builds and allows you to convert your application into a ultra lightweight virtual machine image on Unikernel. Great, now that this is installed, I can just type craft and minus H to see its help menu. Here you'll be greeted with a whole host of subcommands that are used to build, package, and run Unikernel virtual machines, both locally and on the cloud. The first thing that I'm gonna to wanna to do is run craft package update. What this will do is it will retrieve remote packages representing libraries that you can use to build your Unikernel as well as pre-built Unikernel application images, which are in the form of an OCI image. Unicraft hosts a public access pre-built Unikernel archive containing many popular applications. Once run, I can just do craft package ls, and then I can filter by, for example, applications. Apps, let's do all. Here I can see all the different applications that I can run out of the box. Here you'll see popular applications such as Nginx, the node runtime, and many other applications. What's interesting about this list is that there's not only a plethora of pre-built Unikernel applications that you can run ready to go, but also that they're distributed for different platforms and architectures, specifically virtual machine monitors and hypervisors alike. Another thing to note is the size in which these virtual machines are. Take a look at Nginx. For this machine, which has Kimu installed and is an x86 machine, the final virtual machine binary image is only 1.9 megabytes which is actually smaller in some cases than Linux user space programs. This is because of dead code elimination and the removal of unnecessary dependencies from the virtual machine. I can then decide to run one of these with craft run. So craft run unicraft.org, hello world, latest. This is gonna fetch the correct architecture and platform for my computer. So this is using Kimu, it's x86, and great, it pulled it, it's executed, and it says hello world everything works. So since this application exited, I can then see with craft PS and then all, I can then see active or inactive unikernels that are running on this particular machine. Let's just clear that up. Oops. Great. Similar to Docker, you can map ports from the application to your host. 
you can do craft run and that's map port 8080 to 80 and then let's run nginx. This will now start executing nginx and in a separate terminal I can just curl localhost 8080. You'll see that I received a hello world message and then I've received now one request via get here. Cool. If I do craft ps all, you'll see that after I did control C, it exited. Again, I can do craft run minus D, 8080 to 80, unicraft.org, nginx 1.15, and this will start executing in the background. I can then do craft ps again, and you'll see that it's running and it's mapped from port 8080 to 80 inside of the unikernel. So this should give you a sense of what Unicraft and our tooling is trying to achieve here in terms of being able to run lightweight virtual machines. So we've run pre-built unikernel applications, but now you want to make your own. Just like with these pre-built unikernel applications, we've also included a number of example starter projects that you can use on your current or next project. Let's pick HTTP Go. To get started, other than the server application, which is just a simple hello world responder, I'm going to start by copying over the server.go program into my new workspace directory here. So server.go, paste that like that. The two other files that I need are a Docker file. We should feel familiar. We use Docker files to build the root file system. In this case, it's going to use Golang from Docker Hub as the base, which includes the Go standard library as well as all of its toolchain. We're going to copy over server.go into a well-known path. And then it's just a case of running go build. We've added a whole bunch of extra flags for additional optimization. The final step is a scratch container where we copy over the server binary plus the libc dependencies that it needs to execute. This is all that is necessary for a unikernel to execute. Finally, we need something called a craft file. Let's just paste this here. And what this tells us is that we want to use the base unikernel runtime. The base unikernel runtime is a general purpose unikernel that can execute Linux user space applications. We then tell it to build the rootfs from the supplied Docker file, and that we want the command or entry point of the application to be the server binary that we just built. I can then test if this works locally by doing craft run and giving it the current context. And voila, the application is now listening on 8080 and executing as a virtual machine. But we missed one thing. We didn't map the ports. We have to kill this and run it again and map 8080 to 8080. Oops, the Nginx instance is still lingering around. So let's just remove everything. These were all my exited UD kernels from before. I should be able to run it again. The cached build, this thing on 8080, and it's now received an IP address. Great, I can now do curl localhost 8080. Bye world. <laughs> So this is how simple it is to build an ultralight virtual machine image. The next thing that I want to do is package it and push it out to an OCI registry. We can do this with the craft package subcommand. All we have to do is craft package, give it a name. In this case, I can put it under my user on GitHub's container registry. By world latest. It's asking me which runtime I'd like to package. Let's take Kimu. It rebuilt it. Great. If I now do craft package ls and I look at apps, you'll see that it's now appearing here at the top. The final virtual machine image is actually only 12 megabytes in size. I can then do craft package push to push it to GitHub. Great, so we've just learned how to build our application as an ultra lightweight virtual machine image and to also execute them locally. The next thing that we'll probably wanna do is deploy it to the cloud. The easiest way to do that is to use craft cloud. Now this is still in beta, but you can join the program by filling out this short form and you'll get an access token within 24 hours. All you have to do to get started is to export craft cloud token and, and then the access token that you've received over email. I've already set mine, so I can just get started. I can then use craft cloud and its subcommands to build and deploy applications to the platform. The first thing that we'll probably want to see are the different metros that are available to us. We can do craft cloud metros and then ls to see which metros are available to our account. I'm in Central Europe, so Frankfurt is closest to me. I can then check my quotas on the Frankfurt metro by doing craft cloud, setting metro to fra zero, and then doing quotas. This shows me how many instances I can launch, how much active memory is used across all instances, whether I can use volumes and how much is allocated, as well as two other interesting properties, auto scale and scale to zero. 
Autoscale allows us to create many replicas of the same application depending on demand, and Scale to Zero allows us to work in the opposite direction when no traffic is coming in. To deploy the same application to Crop Cloud, I can then just do Crop Cloud, set the metro to fra zero, deploy. We again want to map ports. In this case, I actually want to access it over HTTPS, so let's map 443 to the internal port 8080, and then again give our current working directory context. The root file system is now cached. It pushes it now to a remote OCI registry, and voila, the application has been booted. You'll see here that without additional configuration, it's provided us a subdomain that we can then access. Let's just curl that. Hi world. What's also interesting about this deployment is the boot time. Let's do craft cloud metro fra zero, fra zero instances, and then ls. You'll see that the application is running and that its boot time was 19.69 milliseconds. So to recap, in this video tutorial, you've learned how to build and deploy your application as an ultra lightweight virtual machine, both locally and in the cloud using Crop Cloud.